Chicago Reacts back with another scrim recording. We got I am Zoe. I am Zoe. I am Zoe. Same thing. Now, what he was saying today, what he was saying today, he was basically saying <clears throat> women, guys, because everybody go through it. it ain't, it ain't just women. Guys go through it too. You know, if you're getting any kind of physical hurt, physical, mentally, if if your significant other taking advantage of you and you don't know how to get out, go to a church, go to your mother. If you can't go to your mother, go to your auntie, go to a pastor, go to a, a deacon, go to a reverend, go to an usher, you know what I'm saying, in the church. Or you can go to your next door neighbor if you depend on that person don't be afraid to do it. You know, just, just do it. And so you can live to see another day. Or so you won't be hurt. Or so you ain't got to hurt nobody. You know what I'm saying? Because there's only so much you could take before you, you bust. <clears throat> bust meaning like you do something like you ain't got no business doing. You get what I'm saying? Like if a person been taking advantage of you, you're like, man, man, I want to do this. I want to do that. But... You can get out and, you know, if you got a homegirl, some home got homeboy, whatever the case may be, a kid, you know what I'm saying? Let's take them and just, you know, go talk to somebody. This this is real, like real in the field out here, like in the rural today. A lot of a lot of people been misused, um, been used, been, you know, taken advantage of, um, it's, it's, it's just a lot you go through. If you ain't got that family, you ain't got that support team, I can see this happening to anybody if you if you weak. It's a lot of weak people out here. You know what I'm saying? And not not meaning weak like as in can't lift nothing. Like I'm talking about like a submit to a guy or a girl and they know they know better, but they wanna, you know, choose that, that person or whatever. Thinking that person got their back. A lot of times that person ain't got your back. Because if a guy or a woman got to put their hands on you, they don't love you. I'm just telling you the real. I don't I don't, I don't, don't condone in it. Like, if I see my homeboy do it, I'm pushing him off. Like, get off of her, man. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever the case may be. And it, it's, it's just sad. Like, some people stand around and watch. And they'd rather get their camera and pull their camera out and film it. But they don't want to do nothing. We got to start standing up for our queens out here, man. We need to start standing up and, and stop trying to, you know what I'm saying, pull out our camera. Every time Every time something go down, they pull out a, a camera for a view or a like. You know me, I don't care about the views or a like. I just want to upload. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy life, smile that day. Forget what a header got to say. You ain't got no headers. You ain't popping. I don't want to pop. Just help the next. If you reach out to three people today, and telling you love them, and and you mean it. I'm pretty sure that person is gonna reach out to somebody else, and that one person that really needed it, they got it down. They got that love that you reached out, or somebody reached out. You get what I'm saying? So just reach out and touch somebody, tell them you love them, hold a hand, tell them it's gonna be okay. A lot of people going through financially. A lot of people going through love, heartbreaking. A lot of people going through a lot. Like this, this, this a pan. This still a pandemic. People still out here sick. People still got COVID, and they got all kind of new stuff that we don't even know. They just making up any name to put it on it, and saying, "Oh, oh that's that's um, car lots." You know what I'm saying? Something like that. I'm just saying, like it's 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 sad. And a lot of people hurting themselves because they can't get out and do what they want to do because it's still out here. I'm just saying, man. So I'm going to put him on that. I'm going to put I am Zoe. And he had people to come up here and, and they was talking about it or whatever. I'm, but I'm going to put him on that 445 or something like that. 445. Skip past me. Y'all know y'all want to hear. Skip past me. You don't get to it. And he told me, if you leave me, I will kill you and her. And in that moment, I didn't know what to do except 
I just my reaction was, hey, I need to change her. You want to, you want to, you to, talk to about get you. her? Yeah. And um, I got him from her. He, you know, and then when I got him from her, I called the police and they came and got him. Of course, his family always denied like they knew, but they didn't want to do anything about it. They was just like, well, what you want us to do? Mm -hmm. You know, and I wasn't speaking to my parents at the time. So it was it was pretty bad. So what what was the last straw for you? What made you be like, it, I, enough is enough? My girlfriend came to see me and she wanted to go to the store. And she mm -hmm. said, hey, come on, let's go. I said, OK. I got dressed. I When I tell you, I didn't have on nothing crazy, nothing fancy. I literally had on a T-shirt, some jeans. I had my hair in a ponytail. And I came downstairs and he was like, what the F you think you going? And I'm like, I'm going to go to the store with my girl. And he's like, no, you're not. She looked at him and was like, we going to the store. We'll be back. Right. And he was like, no, y'all not going nowhere. She didn't ask me because she going anywhere. And I just turned and I looked at her. And in that moment, I knew he was about to start his crap. And I said, listen, just go. You go to the store. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. She was like, no, we, no, I'm not doing this with you. No, he, you going to the store, get your stuff. We going to the store. And she turned, she's like, we'll be back. Mm -hmm. He was sitting on the couch. We were by the door. He literally jumped up and ran towards me. And mm -hmm. she jumped in front of me and she pushed him back. And then when she pushed him back, I ran towards the couch. And when I ran towards the couch, I kind of tripped and fell, got up and I was sitting on the couch. She literally came and ran and sat on the couch and sat on top of me mm -hmm. to keep him from hitting me. And she told him, you're not going to hit her. Because mm -hmm. if you hit her, I'm going to beat your ass. That's literally what she told him. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, you know, he would never fight anybody else. But he would always yes. come for me. Yes. He always would come for me. So <laughs> after that day, she was like, listen, you need to call your parents. Because you can't stay here. You can't stay here with him. And you have a little girl. What are you, what are you showing her? So I had to, you know get my little feelings and get my guts together and I had to call my parents and I remember my dad pulling up and he just looked at me and he was like get your stuff let's go and after that you know that that was kind of it like I was I was lucky and blessed enough to actually have my parents come around at some point and take me out of the situation but it was hard even after I left I kept feeling that urge to want to go back because I felt like I abandoned him or I wasn't, um, you know, I was the one that was wrong for leaving him. But that's why I say it's an emotional and a mental thing. It's an emotional and mental thing. Because, yeah, and, I, I, and I, you helped a lot, friend. <laughs> you <laughs> I, because I can see why you, I, I get it. Because it's kind of like when I, because I don't go through, I don't go, I have never been through physical abuse but i've been through you know kind of mental a little bit mm -hmm. where like i you know like, everybody know i date like little hood guys or whatever mm -hmm. and so, so when i see them going through stuff and i feel like they don't have no no family no friends or just that and it's, i feel like i'm your only help right you know i would allow them to still say some of the rude things that they would say to me right I, like why you deal with that though why you deal with that i'm mm -hmm. like and they alone they ain't got nobody they need me whatever whatever right it came to a point where I was just like, you know what? I can't keep doing this because now I'm not mentally happy. You exactly. Know I mean? Exactly. It's like, I got to, what are they going to say today? You know? So I get that, you know? So it's just, you, I know you felt like you was probably their backbone, but really they were really hurting you, girl. Yeah. It was hard. Like I would never wish that on my worst enemy, but I understand when women say it's hard to leave. It I, is. I, because mm -hmm. it's mentally, like you said, and like the other young lady said, I was weak, and he knew I was weak. Mm -hmm. He knew I was weak, and he prayed on it. Yeah. So did you did so seeing your friend stand up to him? Did that motivate you now? Because like that, I felt like that put a light bulb in your head. Like it did. he didn't hit her like he hit me. Exactly. So it, it, it acts like he is. He just knows you were scared. Exactly. Of him. Right. It was like something clicked and was like okay, you need to go, like, because this, this has gotten too far. It's to a point, and it was almost embarrassing. It was like an embarrassing moment for her to literally have to sit on me and then for her to stand up for me like that. It's like, why couldn't I do that for myself? You mm -hmm. know, so it was. It was it was in a moment for me, and I was just like, okay, yeah, this is it. I, I need to leave. I need yeah. to leave. I need to leave. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm so glad you're having this conversation because this is not something a lot of people like to talk about. They just yeah. don't. 
and I feel like they don't because I feel like they don't want to offend nobody. But I think yeah. some you, I think when you do kind of push it to that level where it's a person like me who just don't get it and you get it, mm -hmm. I feel it makes us listen to each other because I like to listen. Yes. So I, you make me get it more because I, I, I know why y'all stay, but it's mm -hmm. just, I just don't understand after you get hit. Like, yeah. Oh, I can get like the first one, okay. Because mm -hmm. like I said, you're like, okay, you know what? He probably didn't mean to do it. But right. like, then when that second one comes, it's yeah. like, okay, bitch. I, I don't see <laughs> like 10 yeah. years. Yeah. I, I didn't leave him until I was 21, and I was with him since I was 16 years old. Yep. It was. How was your how was your life? Was you were you depressed? Oh, I was super depressed and didn't even realize I like my hair was falling out. My hair was falling out. I have never been that small and skinny in my life. Like I just when I tell you, I literally worked up into the day I had my child. Like I went into labor that night after I got off of work. Like it was it was just measurable. Like he depended on me to do everything. Like he didn't want to work. He didn't want to do nothing. So it was like, okay, I had to work because I'm like, we got to live somewhere. We have to eat, you know. Um, I also had my god mom think, like, she was a complete blessing to me. She would come over and bring food. Um, and after I had my baby, of course, her daughter, you know, she would watch her for me and stuff like that. But I, I have to honestly say, you know, I don't, I, I'm not going to tell her, I don't go to church. You know, I'm a faithful heathen. I don't go during Christmas, Easter, none of that stuff. I just don't go. Not proud of that. But um, she was God has always sent somebody to me in my life to let me know I wasn't by myself. Even though I felt like I was by myself, I wasn't by myself. And she literally stood by me through everything. And she always said, if you need anything, you call me. And it would be any time of the day and she would come. And still to this day, like, you know, she's, she's there. You know what I mean? Like she calls, we may not talk every day, but she's there. So, you know, like I said, I don't go to church and all of that, but I do believe in God and I do pray all the time. And, and he's always been there for me. I and, will say that. And this is why I tell people it is so important to go to church. I know a lot of people don't like to because there are a lot of churches who just want the collection plate. The pastors come in there in these Mercedes and Lamborghinis and they got planes. I don't mm -hmm. attend churches. Yeah. I like nice family churches. Mm -hmm. A hundred people, girl. I, I like to go to them old Pentecostal churches where... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like that, yes. and um, you can tell when when a church energy is real and when it's just for show. Yeah. And people just in there come to church, show my outfit, or just to say I go to this church. But I always say it's good to go to church because every day I don't read my Bible. You know what I'm saying? I don't read it every day. I don't study it every day. Things that you're supposed to do, but just like me, school, all the, like you know, you go to school to learn. You get teachings. It's like that. That is what church is for to help us understand life situations in church they mm. to you so that's why my mama always told me so i don't care if you don't go to bible study i don't yeah. care if you go to this but just give god one day one day of your life which is on sundays if you just mm -hmm. go on sunday you mm -hmm. just get one day just so you can learn and soak mm -hmm. it up so therefore when you go through life situations like abuse or racism or this you can pull that scripture you can pull that moment and say mm -hmm. you know what let me gather myself together. And yeah. that is just so important to go to church. Just one day. We do everything else. We can go to the club. We can go to the parties. We can go to cookouts. But just one day to You're just, right. just give them praise. You're so right. I wish more people explained it like you did versus trying to force it on you all the time. Like, oh, God, if you don't go to church, you know. Yeah, so you're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you better no. go to church. Like my mama said, he wakes you up. Even if you don't believe in him, if it's whatever, whatever, I don't want to say, you know, some people don't believe in God, girl, but whatever mm -hmm. higher power you believe in, whatever energy, whatever, they wake you up every day. Yes. That's every day. So you can't yes. just, you know what, let me go, let me go say thank you. Like, You're right. You're right. We don't, we, don't, we don't take that in accountability of like, you don't have to wake up. You're, you could go, you could die in your right. sleep. But, right. you know, that. I, I try to make sure I go every Sunday, even when I'm sick. Because sometimes I can have a headache. And I can yes. be sick. When I go into my church and I start hearing the music, I start hearing the word, I'm like, you know what? My headache is gone, child. And I be good, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to thank you so much for telling your story. What would you tell 
um, a, a lady or your younger self that is going through this situation, what would you say? To my younger self, I would have said, girl, run. Mm -mm, this ain't it. He is not the one. Mm -hmm. To anybody that's going through it, I would tell them to, like you say, love yourself, mm -hmm. be strong, and it's okay to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Don't continue to ignore what's going on. You know, and, you know, don't wait until it gets to be a point where it's too bad. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, just there's resources out there. There are people out there. And don't be ashamed to, you know, tell anybody, like, what's going on? Because sometimes a lot of that has to, you know, it's a lot of that, too. You might be ashamed of, like, oh, God, I can't believe somebody hitting on me. But don't be ashamed. Like, reach out and, and you know what I'm saying, get the help that you might need. But don't be scared. You can do it. Anybody can do it. Don't be scared. Be strong. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Love you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, you got um let me oh, I'm gonna get another one more person. But look, let me y'all, that last thing she said was so good. Do not be yes, I was just gonna say it, friend. Do not be ashamed. Do not be embarrassed. Don't think less of yourself. Don't think you're weird because i think that's what a lot of people think i think people be like oh i don't want to tell nobody because they're gonna judge me because i got beat or they're gonna talk about me fuck it girl <laughs> go get your help because you're not the only person going through that so like she said do not be ashamed oh my god i'm glad she said that because one it is not your fault it is not your fault for being loving. It is not your fault for trying to help somebody become a better person. It is not your fault because this man, this asshole is beating you. It is not your fault. None of this is your fault. I don't. It's not your fault that you saw your parents getting beat or whatever. It's not your fault because you was raised in this type of lifestyle. It's not your fault. But you have the ability to change what you go through. OK, you have the ability to change your life, to change that cycle. You have the ability to do all of that. So, baby, stand up for yourself. Ooh. I'm sorry. y'all. I just love I love women. Men, too. Men, y'all go through the same shit. But I love women so much. I just really, really, really do. And I just I don't want y'all to feel like you have to go through this for somebody. <sighs> You don't. There is love out there. It is out there. It may not seem like it, but it's out there. Let me get one more person. I'm going to get up off here because I don't make y'all cry today. We ain't going to be here. Hey, Brandy girl. <laughs> one more person. We can get up out of here. Um, yes. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. One person, raise your hand if you've been through it and you just want to, you know, <sighs> vent to your fellow people. Um, again, thank y'all so much um, because I just, I just want other women to know it's that you're not alone. And I feel like a lot of people feel like they're alone and they're going through this by themselves. And I just want to let you know that you're not alone. There's many women who are going through this, um, and it's okay. But baby, it's time to wake up. <laughs> okay, let's get friend right here. Hey, girl. Hey. What's going hey, on, Boo? <laughs> okay, so you've you been through it, friend. I've been through it. It started teenage. No, I've been through it. It started at home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Like you, I was raised in a church, very religious. I don't like to talk about it because I wasn't raised by my parents, and you do want to feel appreciative that you had a guardian to step in, but the beatings is where it starts. Like, I really have to work through it now because I have little girls that look up to me that are mm -hmm. my nieces and I have to really be careful with my discipline because when you're beating even if you explain it can be a disconnect and mm -hmm. when you say that it's something connected to a consequence and you get into a loving relationship and there are bigger consequences in relationships when someone feels hurt and they want love you can strike out because that's how it is when you disappoint your parent or guardian after mm -hmm. that i went and started dating at 16 i had my first boyfriend and perfect gentleman even to this day 
a great man. And when things got really, really tough, how relationships get, a fight occurred. But mm -hmm. it wasn't his personality and it wasn't my personality. Great people. Mm -hmm. And then later on in college, that's when it got bad. Like I actually met a bad, like hood nigga. Or whatever. Mm. And I'm telling you, beaten. Like get your hair done, throw water on your hair. You know, tell you you can't go outside with your friends while they on the yard in college. Like horrible stuff, you know. And I didn't. Oh wait, wait, friend. It's about to end. It's on twenty seconds. Treasure eighty. Come right back. It's about to end. It's got seventeen seconds. So come back, and I'm gonna pull you back. Okay.